What is going on everybody? Today I'm going to actually take a look inside the Collective Minds PS4 Strike Pack Dominator. It's a pretty interesting little device. Basically it lets you allow or it allows you to add two paddles. You can see the edges of them here. Two little paddles onto your stock Sony PlayStation 4 controller. And it's a really popular idea with esports players, and I guess it gives you an extra action with your hand without having to take fingers off of uh, the sticks. So I find it really useful, but I also find it really intriguing because I'm curious to know how it works. So I'm going to take it apart. So on the back side, it plugs into the USB port on the DualShock 4, and then there's another but different micro USB port. And so I theorize that the way this works is by connecting to the controller and enumerating the USB device, fooling the controller to think it's plugged into a PC or even a PlayStation, and then intercepting those commands and sending them back out of this USB port and enumerating as a USB controller. Interestingly enough, it actually has a headphone jack on there as well, since the clasp mechanism that it uses to plug in blocks the Sony headphone jack. So that's pretty cool. My guess is it just has a little onboard um, way of supplying a USB audio device, maybe even a USB hub chip on board. So I guess we'll find out and see. But it's really simple. Basically, this guy just clasps and, excuse me, the hinge just comes off. That's how it holds it on the front. Another cool and interesting feature is that the paddles are actually magnetic. So they pop off. And you'll actually see here my 3D printed paddle extenders since my fingers don't quite reach the paddles. And then inside this guy, the switches are actually side facing, side facing and the paddles click them by grabbing onto them and hooking them. So there's really not that much to it actually. Just two small screws on the side, and I'm guessing this guy pops off. There might be a hidden screw under this label, so let's find out. So I don't believe there is a screw under this label, but we'll find out. So after fiddling around with this guy for a minute, I slid the screwdriver down and then it looks like there's a little clip right here. And I'm guessing there's another one here. One note is that this is pretty soft plastic. Uh, I'm not necessarily surprised given this is sold on more or less a budget price, but I <laughs> kind of marred the case trying to get it apart. Okay, so after popping the two tabs here, just hinges out. You can see a little light pipe for the uh, blue alien lights. The quote unquote eyeballs. And this is what we've got. Okay, so this is what the insides of the strike pack look like. We've got the two paddle buttons. Uh, these are the guys that the paddles come out and click that way side to side. We've got our headphone jack and STM32. This is a F205. I'll uh, link the data sheet there. An unpopulated SWD header, but we've got a couple uh, nice labeled test points, TX and RX. I always like seeing that. We have a AMS1117, this is a adjustable voltage regulator. The two buttons for entering programming mode. And we've got one last chip that I actually wasn't able to identify. It's marked ATH540. I'm guessing it's some sort of power supply. I tried to peek at what the traces are going to, but I can't really dig anything up. If you have any idea, please leave in the comments. 
So I'm going to pop these screws off and we can look at the back side. Okay, so one word of warning. If for some reason you do decide you want to go down this route and take this thing apart, the USB that you actually plug into to plug into the PlayStation is hardwired on there with just some small uh, small gauge wire. And so when you unhinge the board, you have to be really careful not to break these free. Otherwise, obviously, your uh, strike pack won't work. On this side, just a couple of chips. We've got a FE1 uh, USB 2 hub, just like I was thinking. Uh, makes sense because the strike pack enumerates as a USB device, and it also needs to enumerate the headset as a separate USB headset. And so that's where the hub comes in. That's also where this comes in. So this is an HS100B. It's from C Media. And interestingly enough, uh, there was a C Media chip used in the Sima deck that I did a teardown on a while back. So I've, uh, I've heard that name before. <laughs> Pretty common, low cost audio chips. Um, not the highest quality by any means, but you're just using this for chat and uh, headset. So this is a dual DAC as well as headphone amplifier and microphone input. Um, it's USB and SPI, but my guess is it's just going through this hub and enumerating on USB. Uh, no SPI. The SPI might still be used, and my guess is um, upon boot, it's actually configured by the STM32, um, setting the headphone gain, etc., etc. Then the last thing to check out are these LEDs. So you can see the LEDs. You can actually see the light pipes that uh, they hook up to so that they can illuminate out of the case. Um, other than that, just some small, some passives, um, some interesting labeled test points, actually. I like that. Uh, VBUS test. My guess this is like a manufacturing test um, pin. Another crystal, likely just for the USB hub, and some passives. Um, there's always like some LC filters on these codec chips. So that's what's inside there. Um, it's about what I expected, but it's actually a very, very clever solution. And to be able to implement all of the logic for this within just a STM32 is pretty impressive. Uh, just goes to show the power of those uh, the power of those chips. So if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, <laughs> um, yeah, just let me know. Let me know what you think. And at this time, I'm also going to shamelessly plug my uh, strike pack paddle extenders. So you can find them on Amazon, maybe eBay, um, and Thingiverse if you want to print them on your own. So yeah, if you for some reason think that would be useful. Overall, very cool product, really great price point um, to be able to include the PCB, the assembly, the component costs, and honestly, the um, custom injection molding. That's actually really impressive for the $40 price point they hit. So yeah, overall, I think it's a really cool product and I actually love playing with it.